Sarah's laugh <laughs> from Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 18, and Genesis chapter 21. Abram and Sarai were old, almost a hundred years old. Many years earlier, God had promised to give Abram his own land. God promised that the land would belong to Abram's children and grandchildren in the years to come. And there would be more children and grandchildren than there are stars in the sky. Wow, there's a lot of stars. But Abram and Sarai had no children. The years kept passing by and they got older and older, waiting for God to keep his promise. In the years in between, Abram had fathered a son with Sarai's servant, Hagar. His name was Ishmael. But God was clear, Ishmael was not the child he'd promised. When Abram was 99 years old, God reminded them he hadn't forgotten his promise. What was his promise? To give him a child, a son. In Genesis 17, it says, Abram fell upon his face and God talked with him. And this is what God said. My covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. Your name will no more be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made you. I will make you exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come out of you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your seed after you, for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto you, and to your seed after you. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be, and I will bless her, and give you a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that's a hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? Then Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Wow, isn't that amazing what God said? And God gave Abram and Sarai new names and made promises called a covenant with them. Abraham means father of many nations. His new name reminded Abraham that he would have many descendants. Sarah means princess. God told Abraham that kings would come from Sarah's womb. But even as Abraham worshipped God, he laughed. What an impossible, ridiculous idea that he and Sarah could be parents of a baby now. There was still no child to prove this promise true. Well, one day, Abraham was sitting at the opening of his tent when he noticed three men traveling toward him. As the guests came closer, he ran to meet them and bowed before them. Perhaps he knew that these were no ordinary men, and he was right. One of them was the Lord himself appearing as a man. The others were angels. Genesis 18 verses 3 through 5 tells us what Abraham said to the three men. My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that you shall pass on. For therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. The guests sat down to rest, and Abraham hurried to Sarah inside the tent. Quick, 
Could you make some bread? Use the good flour, Abraham may have told Sarah. Then before she could ask any questions, he had hurried off to select a calf to prepare for their meal and told the servant how to prepare it. Then Abraham went back to talk to his guests while they waited. Soon the meal was ready and the guests were served. They ate and talked. The one who was really the Lord asked, Where is Sarah? Over there in the tent, Abraham answered. Genesis 18.10 tells us what the Lord said. I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Well, Sarah was listening. And when she heard what the Lord said, she laughed. (laughs) Two people this old having a baby did seem pretty funny. Genesis 18 verses 13 through 14 tells us, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Although Sarah thought no one could hear her, she was wrong. The Lord had heard her loud and clear, and that scared her a little. So she lied. Um, um, I didn't laugh, she said. But the Lord replied, Yes, you did laugh. Sarah couldn't hide her thoughts and feelings from the Lord, and we can't either, right? Even though Sarah didn't believe the Lord at first, God kept his promise. The very next year, Sarah gave birth to a baby boy. Abraham named their son Isaac, which means he laughs. After all, they both laughed at the thought of having a baby at their age. Now here he was, God's living last laugh on them. Now it didn't matter that they'd waited all these years. It didn't matter that they were far too old. God's promise had come true. And their friends praised God for keeping his promise. Abraham And Sarah laughed at the thought of having a baby when they were so old. But God kept his promise. When God's promise was fulfilled and baby Isaac was born, Abraham and Sarah and their friends celebrated. And here's our verse today. It's from Joshua chapter 23 verse 14. And behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth. And ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Joshua twenty three fifteen. This verse reminds us that God keeps all of his promises, and that's a big reason to celebrate. Here's a bounce house, and sometimes when people have a party, they rent a bounce house. Jumping in a bounce house is a way to celebrate, right? Sometimes we get them for birthdays. So a bounce house can remind us to celebrate when we see God keeping his promises. And here's our big idea. Seeing God fulfill his promises gives us joy. Isn't that right? When something comes to pass, it makes us so happy and gives us joy. Now let's think about our Bible lesson today. The Gospel of Matthew starts with a list of people in Jesus' earthly family. So if you look at the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 1, verses 1 through 17, it has a genealogy. And that is a list of people in Jesus' earthly family his grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, and so on. And the list goes all the way back to Abraham and baby Isaac. Do you see that in the illustration? Number one is Abraham. Number two is Isaac. God sent his own son, Jesus, to be born in Abraham's family line. And now, people all over the world celebrate the birth of Jesus, God's one and only Son. God promised to send Jesus, and God always keeps his promises. So remember our verse today, 
And behold, this day I'm going the way of all the earth, and ye know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. All are come to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Joshua twenty three fourteen. And remember our big idea. Seeing God fulfill his promises gives us joy. It seemed like Abraham and Sarah were never going to have a baby boy. But they did, right? And God keeps his promises. And when he does, it makes us really happy and gives us joy. God's story. God's promise to Abraham. So part of God's story is about a promise God made to Abraham. And it begins like this. Once there was a guy named Abraham. He had a wife, Sarah. They didn't think they could have any kids, which was a major disappointment because they really wanted a family. But little did Abraham know that God had a very special plan for him. When Abraham was 75 years old, God promised to give him kids, and one day God would send the rescuer through his family. All God asked was that Abraham and Sarah leave their home first and follow him. Now, they had a tough choice to make, leave all their friends and trust God, or stay comfortable. This was not easy. See, Abraham really wanted kids, but was already pretty old. Sarah was getting up there too, not to mention she had never been able to get pregnant. So if Abraham and Sarah were going to leave their home and trust in God's promise, they had to believe that God would do something that seemed impossible. The good news is, they decided to trust that God would keep his promise. That's always the right choice. So Abraham and Sarah moved from their home to a land called Canaan. Right away, God reminded Abraham of his promise. He said, I will make your children like the dust of the earth. Can specks of dust be counted? If they can, then your children can be counted. This was God's funny way of telling Abraham he would have a lot of kids. Because nobody can count every piece of dust. Well, this promise seemed great, but after a while, Abraham and Sarah still had no kids, let alone as many as the pieces of dust. Now, they were really old. Sometimes God doesn't remind us of his promises because he wants us to learn to trust him. But God took Abraham outside at night and told him to look at the stars. He reminded Abraham that he would give him that many kids. So Abraham decided to keep believing God. He and Sarah waited again. After more years, he got impatient. This time, God told Abraham, by next year, Sarah will have a son. But by now, Abraham was 99 years old. He and Sarah had both given up on having kids and God's promise. In fact, when Abraham told Sarah what God said, she laughed. It's probably not a good idea to laugh at God's promises, but Sarah was tired of waiting and had stopped trusting. The great thing is, even if we think it's impossible, God really does keep his promises. And just like God promised, Sarah got pregnant the next year after Abraham's 100th birthday. When her son was born, she named him Isaac, which means laughter. Sarah said, God has given laughter to me. Everybody who hears about this will laugh with me. And think about it, a really old lady having a baby is pretty funny. God kept his promise to give Abraham and Sarah a son. Even though they didn't think it was possible, it was easy for God because he can do anything, including giving old people babies. And remember how God was going to give Abraham as many children as the stars in the sky? Well, Isaac grew up and had children who had more children who had more children. This kept going and going and going. And guess who eventually was born in Abraham's line? The rescuer himself, God's son, Jesus. All because Abraham followed God and trusted God to keep his promise. And that's the story of God's promise to Abraham. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Abraham and Sarah were old. God promised to give Abraham kids. Abraham and Sarah waited. They got impatient. God reminded them he keeps his promises. Abraham and Sarah waited more. They got impatient again. God told them Sarah would have a baby. Sarah laughed. She had a baby. Jesus was eventually born into their family. God always keeps his promises. And that's a part of God's story. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Sarah. This is Sarah. Sarah was Abraham's wife. One day, as Abraham sat near the entrance of his tent, God appeared to him. Abraham looked up and three men stood before him. 
God promised Abraham that he and Sarah would someday have a son. In fact, God promised Abraham that he would have many children, oh. even more than the stars in the sky. Now, Sarah was very old when God made this promise. When she heard that God promised to give her a child, she laughed. The messenger of God stopped Sarah. He asked, is anything too hard for the Lord? Sarah chose to trust God, and she became pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. The son's name was Isaac. God's promises came true for Abraham and Sarah. Abraham became the father of many nations, and from his child came children, and from their children, more children, until Abraham's descendants were truly more numerous than the stars in the sky. Abraham and Sarah trusted God for the promise and believed that God was faithful.